Hi folks, welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to help demonstrate how to simplify rational expressions. So before we actually start with the simplification process, I'd like to talk a little bit about rational expressions uh, and what they are. So if you think back uh, about rational numbers, let's start with that. A rational number is any number that can be expressed as a fraction, so it's some sort of number a over b where the a and b are integers. So example, 2 sevenths is a rational number. Minus 1 fourth is a rational number. 22 70 fifths is a rational number. Any fraction, a over b, where the a and b are integers are considered rational numbers. Rational expressions are any fraction, a over b, where the a and the b are polynomials. So anything that looks like, you know, 2x squared minus 1 over x minus 5, or you know, x to the fourth minus x over 2 minus x to the third. These are examples of rational expressions. All right, let me get rid of this. <clears throat> now, before we start the simplification process, one more thing to discuss is uh, the denominators. So in mathematics, division by zero is not allowed. It's not a defined uh, operation in math. So whenever you're looking at a fraction, the denominators of these fractions can't equal zero. So when I look at this, this rational uh, expression here, you'll notice that if x were zero, we'd have a zero in the bottom, and that's not allowed in uh, math. Also look at this guy right here, four minus x. If x were four, that would also give us a division by zero. So this expression here, uh, is a valid expression unless x were 0 or x were 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put here x cannot equal 0, x cannot equal 4, because otherwise this expression would have divisions by zeros. Now, simplifying rational expressions is pretty simple. Uh, you just divide out things that are common in the top and the bottom. So let's take a look at the 24 and the 18 here. So 24 Let's see, a couple different ways to write it. It uh, can be thought of as 12 times 2 or uh, 8 times 3. In the bottom here, we have this 18, which is equal to 9 times 2. Now, you'll notice both the top and the bottom are divisible by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this guy by 2, this guy by 2, rewrite my rational expression. So dividing this by 2, we would have 12x to the third times 4 minus x over dividing this guy by 2, we'd have 9 times x times 4 minus x. Now, looking further, you'll notice these are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, divide this by 3. Now we're going to have 4x to the third times 4 minus x over, this will become a 3x times 4 minus x. Now, you might be thinking right now, well, couldn't I have said that both of these are divisible by 6? And the answer is yes. We could have done 24 divided by 6, 4, 18 divided by 6, 3. That would have been just fine, too. All right now, 4 and 3, that's as good as we're going to do there. Let's look at the x's now. x to the third up top and a single x in the bottom. So one of these will divide out with one of these, making that a 2. So this is now going to be 4 over 3 we're going to be left with an x squared up top from x to the third over x. And these guys right here, 4 minus x over 4 minus x, these are just going to divide out. So this thing is done. So 4 thirds x squared is about as simple as we're going to write this expression. Let's take a look at this example over here on the right. This example here is number 20 on page 118 in your college uh, algebra text. So <clears throat> as I take a look at this expression, Right off the bat, it kind of looks like, well, maybe nothing cancels, but possibly something might. All right, what we got to do is we got to factor the top and we have to factor the bottom. So the top factors into 3 minus y and 3 plus y because this is the difference of two squares. All right, the bottom. Let's take a look at this guy now and see if this thing factors. And I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, uh, just kind of guess and try it method here for factoring. Here's a trinomial. It's going to factor into um, a pair of binomials here. 
you look here first, y squared, so this has got to be y and y, so that the product gives me this 1y squared. Now we're going to look here. Factors of uh, 15, well, let's see, 5 and 3. So we might try something like, uh, how about y minus 5, y plus 3, and I'm just guessing right now. Now, when we multiply this out, y squared plus uh, 3y minus 5y, that middle term is going to get us minus 2y. And we look right here and go, oh, it's not minus 2y, it's plus 2y. So I'm going to go ahead and change this sign and change this one Oops. to minus. Now when we multiply it out, we get y squared minus 3y plus 5y. There's my plus 2y minus 15. So this is the correct factorization of this bottom uh, term here. Now as we look at the top and the bottom, all right, here's a y plus 5 here, but there's no y plus 5s in the top. Oh, actually, let me back up a little bit. Again, we should discuss this. What are the possible values for y? You'll notice that y here, uh, value of y of minus 5 would give us a 0 on the bottom, so y can't be equal to minus 5. A value of y equals 3 would also give us a 0 on the bottom. Again, division by 0 not allowed, so y cannot equal 3 as well. Now let's talk about simplifying. So we got a y plus 5 in the bottom, but no y plus 5 is up top. Here's a y plus 3, but there's no y plus 3 in the bottom. These terms here, these are what I always call curiously close. 3 minus y and y minus 3. Now they're not the same thing, but if we take one of these and factor a minus 1 out, here's what the new line will read. If I take this quantity and factor negative 1 out of it, this is now going to be minus 3 plus y, and then times 3 plus y. Bottom, we'll just leave alone, y plus 5, y minus 3. And now, you'll notice that y minus 3 in this upper left, y minus 3. Remember that addition, subtraction, or addition here at least is commutative in that the uh, order here that we add, uh, add these does not matter. So these are the same thing here and here. So they can reduce. And we're left with minus 1 times 3 plus y over y plus 5. Now this is this is good enough. Um, I would call that done. But if you want to kind of redistribute this minus sign and call this minus 3 minus y over y plus 5, that's perfectly fine. Either of these are acceptable answers. So I just wanted to make this video here to demonstrate uh, how to simplify rational expressions, you know, and to kind of go over it in a nutshell. First, you look at the rational expression and you make sure and throw out any values that would give you zeros in the bottom. That's why these values are thrown out and these values are thrown out. You factor the top and bottoms, uh, let's see, and then divide anything that's common top and bottom. So this one didn't really require any factoring, we just started dividing stuff out. This one required some factoring, and uh, after you factor, divide out common terms. That's pretty well it. Um, hope this video helps demonstrate how to simplify rational expressions. Have a great day.